Everyone, welcome to another Founder Wisdom podcast. Today with us, we have Sandra Stepan. She is co-founder at Snap Advantage, marketer, e-commerce expert. Sandra, can you introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about Snap Advantage? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on today. Uh, my name is Sandra. I am based in Canada, I shall say, but I haven't been there in about two years. I am a digital nomad. I've been living out of a suitcase for the past couple of years in mostly Eastern Europe, out of a 23 kilo, or I guess 25 kilos when the people at the check-in counter are nice uh, <laughs> suitcase. And uh, I am a digital marketer, e com expert. I um, co-own a marketing agency where we work with um, service and e-commerce brands that are looking to scale by diversifying traffic sources. So where most brands work with Facebook ads and Google ads and they grow, at one point they plateau, they need to diversify and look into um, not so utilized, I guess, um, marketing channels like Pinterest, mm -hmm. TikTok, uh, text marketing, and email marketing. And uh, I also uh, co-own my own e-commerce brands. We started our journey in 2016. And yeah, we've been doing it for a few years from any corner of the world. Hmm. Did you begin your entrepreneurial career at the same time that you began traveling the world slash being a digital nomad? Kind of. So for me, I knew that um, the um, I tried a corporate life. I worked at a big bank in Toronto and it was fun for a while when you're fresh out of school. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to do this for the rest of my life. Not that there's anything wrong. I just couldn't see myself doing the same thing and, and driving to Toronto and coming back every day. So um, for me, traveling was a goal. So I actually started um out in marketing and started working remotely because I wanted to have this lifestyle. It wasn't the other way around. So I um, went to a marketing um, mastermind in Bali with my uh, partner, so to be husband in 2016. And I saw people are making money online. I'm like, what is this? And these were people that were not marketers per se, as in what you traditionally would think, like they went to marketing, you know, university, for instance, um, they were just regular people that found a way to make money online. And I was like, yeah, I totally wanted the same thing. I want to work from anywhere in the world. So um, with, I guess, my skills and personality, marketing seemed to be um, what uh, what clicked for me. So it was kind of around the same time. It was the motivator. Traveling was the motivator. Yeah. And what countries did you do? Tell us about like your, your whole uh, trip there, because you did a lot of countries. Yeah. Yeah. We started uh, with Bali. We thought it was, I guess, poetic when we decided to kind of like sell everything and leave and be like, yeah, that's where we decided to become uh, digital nomads. So went back to Bali, went back to Thailand a few times, a couple of times, actually. Um, shorter trips in between like the Caribbean and, and North America in general. Um, we initially sold everything and gave up our condo lease in 2020. January and then we had to come back in 2020 um, March from Thailand uh, we had to stay obviously in Canada for a little bit and then in 2021 packed our bags went to the Bahamas for two months um, and two years later it's been Croatia Montenegro Bosnia Romania um, Serbia and actually we're back in the Bahamas now and we are going back to Canada uh, tomorrow if the snowstorm uh, doesn't uh, if the snowstorm allows us yeah. And how how's the Bahamas like? Yeah. Uh, SBF was running his business from there. Like, is there a strong entrepreneurial community and how's, how's the life there? I heard it was pretty expensive. Yeah. Compared to Europe is expensive. Um, we had a bit of a cultural shock and financial shock when we came back to North America. <laughs> I mean, look, like I, I was born in Romania, right? So I, I moved to Canada in 20, uh, 2005 and Serge was born in Bosnia. So our roots are in Eastern Europe. And um, we came back from, you know, like Serbia and Bosnia, where uh, the, the, the cost of living is quite uh, all right for us, for, for the foreigners. Uh, Bahamas, I would say it's a little bit more expensive than Canada. Uh, but for me, like the million dollar uh, <laughs> view doesn't compare to anything, right? Like I'm right on the beach. In terms of entrepreneurial lifestyle, so far I haven't seen it that much here. Definitely a lot more in Europe. I would say that even on the uh, on the coast in like Croatia and Montenegro, I've seen more um, like co-working spaces and uh, more more of that international feel um, than here on the island. But I haven't really 
gone too far on the islands. Um, so I don't know what feedback you've gotten other than it is a little bit expensive, but well, that work somehow. SBF and his weird uh, crew was running it, their business from there. And um, I've checked, for example, in my um, Apollo account slash CRM, like the types of entrepreneurs that I'd find there. And I've, I've searched for agency owners. I think I found like mm. 70. So there's mm -hmm. not a lot of them. So it's still a mm -hmm. um, small but growing community. I've been yeah. to Serbia myself. I really liked it. Uh, I yeah. have Serbian clients and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I really like the my experience there. I want to visit Romania, eventually Croatia mm -hmm. as well. Um, and yeah, that Bosnia, that Montenegro, that these would be like nice places to to visit as well. The Wi-Fi yeah. speed is quite high and yeah. the cost of life is is low. So I remember actually visiting Serbia, not only because I had friends and employees there, but because yeah. Nomad List was had had belgrade at number four at on their list you know yeah so like thousands of cities so yeah it was definitely one of my favorite favorite spot what was um some of your favorite spots besides uh bahamas yeah so first of all yes you gotta go visit romania because again i was born there so i have to advertise it but um these countries are are great for uh for digital nomads for me, I always go back to Croatia. Croatia is just, it has my heart. Bali does too, because it's where I decided to become an, you know, an entrepreneur and a digital nomad. But for me, Croatia is just one of those countries that has everything. I really hope that not everyone that listens to this episode is going to be like, okay, we're going to Croatia because please don't drive the cost up. Um, but <laughs> Croatia is just, um, it's magical, honestly. Like it has this, this unique like blend of East and West. So for me, like the Eastern lifestyle of our music, our food, our people, our, our, right that we get in eastern europe um with that western mentality of we are still keeping things in order and it's clean on the streets and you know people don't litter as much as i'm sorry as much to say as some places in in more eastern europe um the water you can't compare and the fresh seafood i mean if you love seafood and i you you live in mexico now right i think yeah. so you, you probably eat a lot of seafood yeah so you can get you know to me a glass of white wine on the on the promenade with some fresh squid can compare it so yeah i would i would love to move there if i can it would be my uh my top 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 choice yeah and i'm looking at nomad list right now we have buenos aires that i've been that's like number three Mexico mm -hmm. City, like the quality of air is not like super impressive. Uh, it's actually like I got sick like uh, after doing a marathon near there. Uh, Madeira, mm -hmm. Portugal, which I also did, which is number five. Nice. Um, nice. Medellin, which is like pretty popular, Grand Canary Island. Yep. And it's it's interesting because you check the cost of life and real estate. Uh, it says like, for example, Mexico City, it says 2000 a month, which is somewhat accurate. Like if you want to get a, a normal airbnb it's like a thousand bucks a month and then you don't yeah. factor in the food and all of that mm -hmm. um how, how much do you pay typically for an airbnb on a monthly basis yeah we uh in eastern europe we've been staying around 2k canadian so i guess that's what 1600 us um yeah. definitely a lot more than the locals are paying um so i know when i told these prices to my uncle he said you're absolutely crazy um, can give me half of that and stay in my cottage. I stayed in his cottage for free a lot. Um, but with us, there's a lot of other things too, right? Like we prefer to use credit cards and we want to be, um, I don't want to deal with cash, not locally. Um, mm -hmm. So for us, we it, it went up. The prices went up after what happened with Ukraine. Um, obviously you have a country like Serbia that's, and I don't want to get into politics, but <laughs> you know they're friends with Russia. So we, we had no problems in Serbia with um, any supplies or electricity or whatever but if you go to other countries more western europe um it was a little bit of a of a hike so um about 2k for rent um and then we do eat out so i haven't cooked in like two years i i literally just started cooking now which is like an omelet of that um so we do eat out two three times um a day so if you want to live like lavish i would say for a couple it would probably be like I don't like 5k a month but like I'm talking we went to like Michelin star restaurants like we would just like you know like rent a car and go go to like another country for like a concert or 
just like things like that. But if you want to have, if you're a digital nomad and you want to, you know, live a, a comfortable life and not lavish, um, in Eastern Europe, you can definitely do it even as a tour- tourist for like less than 2000 euros. So maybe mm. 15 to 2000 euros. Yeah, I agree. Romania, Serbia, Bosnia. Yeah. And the Wi Fi speed is quite important too, you know, like, uh, yeah. How's it in the Bahamas? Is it good Wi-Fi? Because I, I guess it is like U.S. Uh, former colony, no? Yeah, yeah. In uh, in the Bahamas, we have a good internet. I haven't had issues. Like maybe like twice a day, like interrupts for like a minute. Yeah, but if you look at some stats, like I remember reading a while ago, like some of the fastest internet in Europe was some like elderly lady in a village in Romania because we didn't have like the old internet like right like went a lot to like fiber optic because romania was so closed off before like 89 Mm -hmm. so the internet in eastern europe is some of the best in the world now Mm -hmm. um in the bahamas it's an island so that's the one thing that i'm i've been learning over the the past few weeks it's that it's an island the life is a little bit different expectations are different interactions are different so yeah for sure it is yeah, I've also talked like with a nomad yesterday and uh, mm-hmm. he uses, uh, well, his Airbnb. So there's like right, quite a crappy internet on the West Coast of Oaxaca. Mm-hmm. So it's like in Mexico and the Wi-Fi that he found that specific spot was not government um, reliant. It was mm-hmm. Starlink, you know, so um, mm-hmm. someone that bought 500 bucks Starlink hardware uh, paid 70 bucks uh, per month for it and I found that kind of game changing they also are starting to sell um, Starlink for RV camper vans um, okay which was a, a project of mine also like a potential project driving around Mexico and whole South America uh, with great internet um, well the the thing with Starlink is that you can't uh, it, it stops at Mexico basically and then it restart it restarts in Chile and Argentina, okay. I think. Um, so yeah, like Wi-Fi is, is super important because in this journey, yeah. you know, like first me, I I hate traveling like with uh, in plane. It's always a bad experience, whether business class yeah. or, or whatever. Um, even, well, private jet would be the exception, but then like the, the cost factoring is like a thousand X uh, what you would yeah. normally pay. So it's, and it's not a thousand X better. It's like 1.25 yeah. X better. I would guess, right? Cause I haven't done it. The second thing is Wi-Fi uh, typically um, in, in these spots. So like these, these have been the, this, the kind of things with my normal journey that I didn't like. Um, mm-hmm. We talked about this stuff that you like, what did you less like about that nomad journey? Yeah. Um, I, to be honest, like I went from like when I was younger in my in my twenties, I I think at one point I counted like seventy something pair of shoes, hmm. so I I miss my my designer stuff, right? So like that's the one thing that you don't do when you travel. You're not bringing your thick gold chains. Not that I have a lot of thick gold chains, but I'm not gonna be wearing my Louboutins in a town in a country where you know people make that amount a month like it's just to me it's just not sensitive Mm -hmm. um so not like i'm like i'm starting to get less attached to those possessions of course they're all in boxes and god even knows where they are because both of our parents sold their their houses too um so not having a lot of like clothes i guess when i wanted to go you know like i went to a nice business meetup with um i think like some manager of some hockey team from canada was there too in zagreb and everyone was wearing like designer stuff and chanel i'm like oh i want to wear my boots but anyway so that it's not a big thing um the other one being um you know people will try to take advantage of you so you've got to be smart so i've definitely um, you know, if you can learn the language or at the very least, like, attempt to understand some words. Um, I fought with, like, cab drivers and got out of cab. You know, like, they tried to charge, like, 40 euros for, like, a seven-minute, like, drive. So people do try to take advantage of you. That's another thing. Um, other than that, there's not a lot of things I didn't like about being a digital nomad. Like, I I learned to adapt to change. I learned mm-hmm. to be... Um, I learned to be flexible. So things mm-hmm. are not going to go our way always. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going to have to, you know, we're not going to get a plane today. We're going to have to take a bus because there's no plane or whatever. Like they're not coming. They're not showing up. So mm-hmm. I think it's it's a lot about your mindset too, right? Mm-hmm. Like we've had people that 
maybe visited us and what we talked to and they're like, yeah, I can never do it. Like I can't rely on, on this. I can't rely on bus drivers or taxi drivers or whatever, or I don't like to pack and unpack. Like, I think we had like 40 check-ins in two, two years. So it's like packing and packing 40 times. You get used to it. So not a lot of things I didn't like. To be honest, I, I just want to keep doing it. I'm just going to be in Canada for a few months and then I'm going to go back. Yeah, it's pretty cool, yeah. right? Uh, for the luxury stuff, I mean, most folks don't know what uh, LV and these brands are, you know? So it's like, me personally, it's more like the quantity. So I I invested yeah. more in quality stuff and yeah I, but i don't i don't i don't flash yeah when i started exactly. my journey at I, I i sold my gold watch i sold my gold chain yeah it, and it's also it came with my mindset right i wasn't about showing off anymore and it was like exactly. an evolution um, exactly and also like for the the taxis me i just realized that you know at the end of the day well first in mexico there's not a lot of it maybe a, a bit mm -hmm. on on the west coast of oaxaca they, they try to to trick you and sometimes just like not worth the fight you know like uh, if if because when you do the conversion like let's say they charge me they normally charge me 500 pesos or 700 and now that this guy wants to charge me a thousand or thousand five hundred yeah. yeah it's two x but that's not the metric here the metric is like how much is it mon how much money is it for me and the, exactly. the conversion is like 50 bucks so like who gives a shit uh, if it's like 50 bucks more I agree. let this guy have it and feed his family literally or do whatever he, he wants I agree. to do with it um i never really had fights yeah i had like uh i mean my wife is more like that you know like justice she's like a fighter yeah. like and and that stuff but me I'm, I'm more chill about it and more like energy yeah. focused so it's uh, yeah, I never really had these sort of confrontation. Maybe once with yeah. like an Airbnb uh, guy, uh, he kind of fought with my assistant back in days that was traveling with us. Um, but yeah, that was it. And that my assistant also got her, well, my cell phone stolen from her hands in Morocco. So that was kind yeah. of awkward um, and kind of, yeah, tarnished the reputation of Morocco to my eyes. But uh, these were all like fun experience at the end when you look yeah. back at them um and even if this airbnb guy like was kind of a crook and he he gave me a rental car that where the wheel was literally falling off and we could have died uh but yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> that's another story uh how, how have you been dealing with your your clients and your business since then i guess you made the full uh digital shift like how has it yeah. been running your your business from a distance since then yeah, we've actually been the most productive. Um, our business grew a lot, like from 2021 when we left until um last um fall, we grew 3x, and that's because we we removed so many distractions. So um we we obviously miss everybody here, right? But we didn't go to parties anymore. We didn't drink as much anymore. We meditated every day. So what we started doing, we have a very strict schedule, no matter where we are. So um, when we're in Europe, uh, we're six hours ahead. So then we have time in the morning to kind of do life, like meditate, read, go to the gym, shower. And then I start work before everybody even wakes up. And then I'm still because I'm client facing, I still um, am online at least until like 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time, mostly until 4 or 5 p.m. So very strict schedule, no matter where we are. And even if we're with people, friends, family, like people started visiting us and so on, um, we're not on vacation. Like we don't take vacation. We took some days off for Christmas and we're going to take a, a week off for our honeymoon. But even now in the Bahamas, my parents are down at a beach. We're working, right? It's like 30 degrees outside. It's sunny, but we're working. So... I love it. Like, that's why I want to go back. It's because we're so productive and it's quiet. There's no distractions. We do our own thing. And then, um, yeah. And because your money stretches so much more in pretty much most countries than in U.S. and Canada, you can afford to have a better experience, right? So now I don't have to cook anymore because in Serbia, I can buy a steak for under $20. I don't have to clean anymore because I can hire someone for 50 bucks to come clean my apartment. So we found that even though we work longer hours and we, we work into late into the night, especially in Europe to like 11 uh, p.m. or 12 a.m., um, the time that we do have available was super quality time, which I liked. Hmm. How's it to work with your husband? How do you keep your relationship sane? 
Yeah, I get that question asked so much because we've been doing it for almost, what, seven years now. Um, we, like, when it comes to our work, so everything rolls out around work for us. And that's one thing that people don't understand. Like, I don't, you know, we've had people, friends that said, ah, I don't want to talk about business today. It's like a Friday for us. Like, we're excited to talk about business. So, like, all of our conversations pretty much revolve around, like, work mindset how do we want to grow what are the projects do we, where do we want to invest our money so that's our breakfast so we still get that one-on-one -on -one intimate you know like breakfast experience but we're talking about work so we're productive um we give each other space so um the reason why i said yeah for us it, it probably does cost five thousand plus to to live in even in Eastern europe is because i do want the one or two bedrooms having space matters so much and uh having that one room where you can go by yourself and, and just like be alone i think it's important mm -hmm. and when it comes to work we have very different roles so i stay in my lane he stays in his lane we do not cross each other's lane i do not touch his ads his technical stuff i don't touch anything he works on he doesn't touch sales and yeah. if we need each other's help we ask for each other's help but we have very very defined roles um mm -hmm. and that work then uh, we we like being together i i know that it sounds weird like we're always together but i think we just kind of grew as people together because we've, we've been together for seven years i was just telling my mom my parents are here i told her it's not like it's not personal to anybody, but we just like to be on our own. Like we love having people over from time to time, but we can't live with other people in our house. We don't like roommates. We don't just me and him. Yeah. It worked. I can relate. Yeah. With yeah. my with my wife, we've been together for uh, yeah, six or seven also. And we tried working yeah. together before it never worked, you know, <laughs> that mm. the work I think is just not the same. And I'm kind of a an extremist, you know, like as a as a person. Yeah. So. And I, I don't, I, it's weird, you know, but it's, it's really hard for me to find a business partner to, to like adapt mm. to my lifestyle with like that many mm -hmm. business and that work ethic and so forth. Um, but it also, I think it has served in some instances where I'm like stressed out and I just don't want to rethink about work and I, I just need to shut it down. You know, there's also like yeah negative stuff re related to that because the, the ideal, um, technique would be to kind of deal with all of this um so there's like exceptions mm -hmm. uh to fix the the root of the problem itself and so forth but yeah that it, it's nice also to just disconnect and and live yeah. life and not necessarily talk about business and be that kid you know and laugh and just you know yeah not think about sure. business and then the background the brain kind of solves things up or or just time um yeah but yeah it's been it's been uh um, no, tricky yeah. Yeah. You need a pause from time to time. I get it. Like, you know how many people, like, I just don't realize that people's first thought in their minds in the morning is in work. Like I was talking to yesterday to someone that I work with and he's like, what you think about work first thing in the morning? I'm like, man, I dream about my projects. Like the yeah. first thing I think yeah. about when I wake up, it's like, okay, what are I going to do today? Right? Like, where's my list? Yeah. And like, I forget that people don't live like this. And mm. it's nice when I, when I spend time with a friend that doesn't do this because like you said I disconnect like I go shopping go for a drink and whatever is fine me and yeah. Serge we're literally like we don't like we let each other work till 3 a.m we have to work right? work yeah. till 3 a.m and we'll work together on it right yeah so you still I get have it time or do you need to hop for another call yeah. no that's good that's good okay because yeah I I can relate uh to that like I mean how many times did I dream about AI this year it's like disturbing you yeah. know it's like yeah. uh I don't know. It's I don't know how to describe that one, but yeah. And the reason for that is that yeah, I get I get in bed and then I read for like two to three hours. Um, a lot about yeah. AI this year is like it's just crazy. Uh, talking about this year, have you been like riding the AI wave, and how have you been swimming through the the existing recession uh, as of now? Yeah, yeah, it's been a very interesting year for us. So, um. For me, I was actually so in in j just briefly back to the conversation where say you're dreaming about AI. Mm -hmm. For me though, I've noticed that because I'm so obsessed with work, I get the projects right. So where someone's passive and they stop replying at five p.m., I will reply at eight p.m. If you're gonna email me at eight p.m., that's just the kind of person I am. So when okay. the re when the COVID started, we actually grew a lot because um the ones that weren't able to keep up, they just kind of like felt they felt 
fell apart, right? But the ones that were obsessed with work and making things happen, I think we we continue growing. Um, this year was a little bit different with AI. Um, just like most marketers, they were a little bit like, oh my god, like is ChatGPT here to like take our jobs? And it's like, no, man, like the dishwasher was invented so long ago. I'm still washing dishes. I still got stuff to do in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. So yes, we've been definitely riding the AI wave and and utilizing it. Like the machine is there to serve you it's not the other way around so for me it's like okay i can do a lot more stuff now faster and get more clients and make more money um for us we've had a little bit of a shift um back to your recession question we had a bit of a shift because we've been we've been growing for for two years um but we've been growing differently so we actually did um make the decision to make our um agency more lean. Um, one thing that we noticed was that a lot of partners and clients, they wanted to work with me and Surge directly for strategy specifically yep. and not with other contractors, yep. which yep. is understandable. So for me, one thing that I've learned is that I love marketing. Like that's, I love strategy. I love writing. I love to be a marketer. And we we decided to, you know, we have AI for mechanical fulfillment now. So I think the brands that need to keep pushing right now need strategy, like very quick thinking strategy um someone that's on the ball you know like we have our clients we have we had a client once we were on our way to um to dinner and he's like messaged me he's like my website is down we're in the middle of a sale help i literally we stopped like honestly we didn't even go to dinner i said okay search you go on um on child support with shopify i'm gonna call shopify and i'm gonna fix this for him and we are those people. I can expect that from someone that I hire because they don't have the motivation to do it. Uh, mm. For me, I have the motivation today because I have to shop every month with like a huge list of expenses that I have to pay, right? So for us, we decided to make the decision to become more lean in our, how many people we have on our team. Uh, but we've actually been able to handle more work because we're using AI for mechanical fulfillment, but then we're using um, the team to stay truly boutique and do a lot of strategy and quick thinking for our clients. And that's been working out so far. We're three months into the year, so we'll see how the rest of the year looks like. Long answer there, but yeah, you're peaks clients... and valley here, man. Peaks and valley in our in our agency life. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think it's like that in most entrepreneurs' life. I think most mm -hmm. people they the thing is when things are going bad, you know, don't lead in the, the bad. It's it's just gonna mm -hmm get worse and it's it's also like just a false notion so when when you feel bad because it's it's a feeling or normally it's uh, and i found out that most of the times sometimes it's my body it's my energy so mm -hmm. try to fix your your health first and observe like your body and when yeah. you see that you're you're getting downs you know just waver through it and uh same when everything's going good you know like I've I've learned that celebrating early. I mean, I've saw a Twitter post yesterday of a guy. He was announcing a 9k USD sale. And mm -hmm. then right after that, he announced like, oh, it was an error from the client. And now the client wants the refund. Um, so it's like, yeah, it's, it's just to yeah. stay more level headed and uh be a bit more, you know, objective and, and so forth. So yeah, and it it's like that in I every think. industry. Uh Talking about industry, do you target mostly D2C? Do you, do you have hot niches for us? Yeah, usually it's uh, B2C. I don't do a lot of B2B. I do a couple brands B2B. So I have some entrepreneurs and service businesses that are B2B, but mostly it's B2C. Uh, mostly because um, we have more scalable systems, but also we're e-com entrepreneurs ourselves. So we know e-commerce more than just marketing so we can help on a lot of a lot of fronts too so i've been through someone you know stole my website i've been through people stealing my name and my branding and sending you know scamming people and then sending customer support to my full-time customer support agent so we can help on so many fronts um in terms of niches we've done really well with the unsexy niches like like hot tub filters and like boating like dashboards i don't want to call like <laughs> you know my clients products are sexy but you know like fashion we do a lot of fashion too but i feel like a lot of people are so attracted to like fashion and food and like everything that's glitzy um we also like the technical stuff but um we have a pretty eclectic collection now we we do have fashion we have boating we have home and garden um and some financial um niches now too but mostly mostly beauty 
what's uh, in the plans for you guys in 2023? Where do you want to take the agency? Yeah, we're uh, we're looking at bigger projects. Actually, <clears throat> we've done uh, quite a lot of smaller projects in the past, but now I'm looking at we're good where we have a good uh, we have an imprint on multiple uh, branches of marketing in the in the ecosystem. So instead of doing one thing vertically, we're better when we do um, a little bit of this, like a little bit of email, a little bit of social, a little bit of um, influence marketing, because I can align all of these pieces. And I find that sometimes when there's other marketers we work with, we're not always aligned. Um, so bigger projects for us. I want to hit the 100K mark a month so I can make it a seven figure um, seven figure agencies. That's my grand plan. And um, I've been working on personally getting into a couple of CMO projects where um, I don't fulfill, but I do the, the the strategy and the organization of the entire marketing. That's been that's been on my mind for a while. And, um, yeah, hopefully some courses, but I don't know if I'm very serious about that because it's been on my mind for a while, but I haven't really planned it. So yeah. I'll, uh, maybe I'll just put it here so I can hold myself accountable next time we talk. Same here for the <laughs> courses. I did some like, uh, four years ago, I think I generated like total two to three K it was yeah, five, six years ago when I was targeting nice. realtors, um, and it it wasn't wasn't significant enough for me to be like mm. oh yeah I'm going I'm going all in, I have courses yeah. that I still sell but it's yeah I don't know why it's like not, I mean it's scalable but yeah it's like you constantly need to update these courses you need to pro promote yeah. them on the proper platforms and so forth so yeah yeah it hasn't got because I think you you shift your energy into something when the the pain is so great or the potential momentum that you can gain is is great you know and that hasn't been the the case yeah. you know it's all about the mental balance when it, it comes to these I agree decision um one last question for you Sandra what would you mm -hmm. advise let's say a, a female entrepreneur that wants to start her own agency she's young she doesn't know where to start she's probably lacking motivation what uh tips or hacks would you have for her yeah um, I would say start earlier rather than later, like waiting until you're ready, you're waiting until perfection, that there's no such thing. Like if you're not embarrassed about the first iteration of what you're doing, it's it's a little bit too late. So I would say get started and don't be afraid to do things for free. Like if you don't know where to start, um, think about what you want to do, who you want to work with, um, reach out go and pitch. So when people tell me that pitching, you know, like you shouldn't pitch on LinkedIn, la la la. I, I absolutely cannot stand those people that are like, we should just grab a coffee. Uh, no, please pitch me. I want to know why you're selling me because I know you're mm -hmm. going to sell me anyway. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to pitch. Think about who you want to work with. Think about what you want to do and just reach out to people and say, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. I want to give you something for free because I'm just starting out. Um, here's what I'm asking in return. Maybe it's a phone call. Maybe it's a feedback session. Maybe it's a, um, a survey or whatever. Um, do a lot of research. Look at people that are doing and are living the life that you want to live. Um, and maybe remember that like being an entrepreneur, it's not all glamour. So yeah, I traveled the world and I've, 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 you know, lived in really nice places, but that also comes with being, being on a beach and working, that also comes with working at 12 a.m. on a Friday night when my friends are partying, right? So um, think about the lifestyle you want to have and the sacrifices you want to make to get there. But yeah. get started. I would yeah. say the first thing is get started. You can do it. You don't have yeah. to wait for perfection. Yeah, same here. And, and I would double down on that saying that I live uh, the rich life. I've lived the poverty life too. You know, it's all about your definition of like mm. what's what I've never been mentally poor you know in, in which I was like desperate and and all of that but like if sometimes you looked yeah. at my bank account you'd see like literally six dollars uh at yeah. some points and then the next day well 6k just comes in and then another 10k so it's it's all about how you deal with it the journey makes Absolutely. you stronger so uh it's a, it's, it's a worthwhile bet um where can people find out more about you yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm quite active. So if you go on LinkedIn and you search Sandra Stepan, no H, uh, you can find me there. Um, on Instagram, I share a lot of my about my travels. So it's Sandra Stepan on Instagram. And if you want to check out my website, it's snapadvantage.com. Um, all of those platforms have my contact information so we can get in touch.